You are listening to WDOT Network. I'm Ryan Baxter, starting the monthly report with football. The Vikings football team is off to a rough start, with their current record being 0-3. Going into Week 1, the team had high hopes being led by quarterback and junior Harrison Behan and wide receiver phenom Anthony Iorio. Unfortunately, the Vikings fell to the Mass Peak with Chiefs by a score of 48-14. to also, wide receiver Owen Kirschenblatt was plagued with a dislocated knee in the second quarter, which will have him on injured reserve for the remainder of the season. Going into Week 2, Port had revenge on their minds. Just last season, Port went into their senior night, not expecting much from the East Meadow Jets, who they'd beaten just a year prior. The Vikings were caught off guard, losing and almost being eliminated from the playoffs. Now with that behind them, they came into the game with one goal in mind, to win. After a few rough drives and the game came down to the final 31 seconds, East Meadow squeaked out a win against the Vikings. An 0-2 demoralized team went into Hempstead with an immense frustration and wanting nothing more than a tally to their win column. A rainy Saturday afternoon hosted a mellow Pride and Port game that the Vikings are definitely going to remember. During the second drive of the game, Harrison Behan fell on his right shoulder, separating his clavicle and was taken out. Sophomore Jimmy Gannon stepped up to the plate but could not get much done with harsh conditions holding the team back from offensive success. Dwayne Metters, the 6'2", 210-pound running back of Hempstead, was limited to his lowing rushing game of the season, but cracked the defense of Port Washington and hit the end zone, winning the game 7-0 for his team. Behan is now out for the season and is receiving surgery today, with Anthony Iorio stepping up as the new quarterback for the worrisome Vikings. Their next game is home against Farmingdale at 2 o'clock, where the Vikings hope to finally strike success. Now with soccer, here's Henry. The Varsity Boys soccer team is currently 4th in the AAA Nassau County Conference with a record of 3 wins, 1 loss, and 2 draws. The team is led by captains Roberto Lopez, Felix Rubenstein, Owen Neville, Owen Jarrell, and Luke McNaughton. They just tied Plainview this past Wednesday, 0-0, at home. They have another very important game at home this Friday against the first-ranked team in the AAA Conference, Baldwin, who are also a top 15 in New York State. One of the key players in this past game against Plainview was goalkeeper Owen Jarrell, who had a clean sheet yesterday and has only led in three goals this entire season and has a total of 27 saves this season. We interviewed Jarrell post-game on his performance this past game. Here's the interview. All right, I'm here with Owen Jarrell. This is post-game of the 0-0 match against Plainview. My first question is, Owen, what is your initial reaction to having let in zero goals today and keeping a clean sheet? I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a goalie statistic, but it's really a team statistic. It's, it shows how good the, the, the defense all played together, and I'm just a part of that. What do you think are things you can work on after this game? Do you think there's a lot, if there is any? As a team or as a not me personally? You personally. Um... Probably, I could work on distribution. Uh, it was um, inconsistent the, throughout the game, and it, I could have been a lot better at that. Well, I think you played really well today. Um, do you have anything to say about your defense and the achievements you played with today? What are your thoughts on how they played? Today? Defense played great, great game. They're, we played great opponents. Uh, it was a tough game, but they fought out, and 0-0 zero, zero isn't that bad. All right, thank you, Owen. That was Owen Jarrell. I'm Henry Van. Now with girls' soccer, we have Cho. Thanks, Henry. The girls' varsity soccer team here at Port is off to a hot start, standing at 5-1-2 and two overall, and sitting atop the conference undefeated in conference play. Their most recent win came against Division, winning in dominant fashion 3-0. Eloise Rubenstein had two goals in that game, and leads the way with seven goals and one assist. Captain McKenna Romero also tacked on six goals herself. Goalkeeper Sailor Engel has four clean sheets in eight games played. The girls have many big fixtures coming up, facing off against the likes of Baldwin, Hicksville, and New Hyde Park. On to Boys Cross Country with Higgins. The Boys Cross Country team is undefeated so far this season, led by Max Morrow and Lucas Durazno. After winning the division, the boys are looking to win the conference championship on Tuesday, October 3rd. Earlier this season, Durazno ran a 16:32, which puts him amongst one of the top runners in the co- county. Port Cross Country looks to continue their dominance going forward against tough teams like Oceanside and Calhoun. The, teams, the team looks like to win the Nassau County Championship and hopefully advance to the state championship. Off to Hannah with Girls Cross Country. Girls Cross Country is currently second in the division and third in the conference. Junior Ashley Carrillo is in the running for a county champion title for the second year in the row. The girls are training through heat waves and rainstorms for the county championship race Saturday, October 28th and for the opportunity to earn all-county and all-conference titles. Also, the Port cheerleading team has been practicing their new routine as they continue to cheer for the football team. The team will be entering game day competitions where they will show off their engaging spirit. The first competition is Wednesday, October 4th at Cold Spring Harbor. And now with field hockey, here's Mason. 
Currently, the girls' field hockey team is 1-3, and three, a slow start to the season. But one of their losses was a 3-4 to four loss to North Shore High School, which was a close game. They kept all the games close except the loss last game to Locust Valley, where they fell 4-0. What changes does this team need to make to get back to winning field hockey? Maybe they need to rely on one of the four freshmen on varsity or potentially make a call-up from JV. Hopefully the girls can get back on track and make a playoff push. Now here's Josh with swimming. Thanks, Mason. The girls' swimming and diving team is off to a great start this season. They opened their season with a huge win on September 12th as the Port Washington swim team defeated Cold Spring Harbor by a score of 94-62. to Port Washington won 11 of 12 events in this contest. Senior Savannah Ahrens won the 100 butterfly and the 100 breaststroke, while freshman Sydney Lay won both the 100 and 200 freestyle races. Other big performances came from junior Stella Felix, who won the 50 freestyle and placed second in breaststroke, and 8th grader Telly Palakronis, who won the 50 freestyle and came in second in the 200 freestyle. They followed up the win next week with another win against the Wanaka District, with a final score of 91-76. to Port Washington was led to this win by their captains Julia Kittle and Stella Felix, both of whom had two first-place finishes in this meet. Port Washington would keep their undefeated season alive last week as they had a 20-point win against Oceanside. They won 99-79. Their young talent led them to this win as freshman Sydney Lay won the 200 individual medley and the 100 backstroke, while 8th grader Aaliyah Brodsky won the 200 freestyle and finished second in the 100 freestyle. Port Washington will look to continue their undefeated season next week against Great Neck North. And now with news on boys volleyball is Cody. Thanks, Josh. Huge news for the boys' volleyball team, as they were able to get their first win Tuesday night against Greyneck after a rough start and a losing streak to begin the season. The Vikings came from behind after being down 2-0 to win 3-2. Captain Sam Mills and Max Baum were instrumental in making the turnaround and fighting back to win. Their leadership was especially vital considering the game was not played on home court and the Vikings needed to come away with a win in the hostile environment. Strong performances were also turned in by middle blocker Addison Cromie and outside hitter Austin Hyde. They will need to stay on top of their game as boys volleyball will look to carry the momentum from this comeback into their match tonight, where the Vikings will take on Plainview Old Beth Page JFK at home. Now to, now to Cal with girls volleyball. Thanks, Cody. Coming off two losses, Port looks to bounce back in their next couple of games going into this season. In their last outing against Plainview, they got off to a tough start in a close set, losing 25-21. to They dropped the next set 25-18 to before surrendering the final one 25-15. to Cade Marvin and the Vikings look to recover in their next game against Seaford on Wednesday night. Now to JoJo with girls tennis. Thank you, Cal. Moving over to girls tennis, they enter this season with two commanding wins against girls tennis powerhouses. The two wins came against Great Neck South and Manhasset. The main focus for tennis this year has been doubles and has always been. They started off struggling due to losing majority of their star players who left for college. The team is filled with freshmen and 8th graders. They are looking to continue their strong season. Looking into an interview with Captain Yasmin Munoz. Until this point. Yeah, so um, after we lost like uh, the majority of our lineup last year to seniors, I think that I'm just super surprised and proud of like our resilience and our uh, continuity of intensity to pull out wins and to just stick it out even though uh, it's been tougher this year. Um, so yeah. Who has been one of the newer players that has surprised you on this varsity team? Um, I have two in mind, Ruby and Shoya. They're freshmen, um, and they have, this is uh, they made the varsity team this year. Um, and coach put them in at second doubles together. Both of them have never played, and they've I think won almost every match. Uh, other than Sayasa, they've won every match, um, and I'm just really proud of them and just surprised at how they've been able to adapt so quickly to the varsity level. How do you guys think you guys, how do you guys think you're gonna fare against Manhattan tonight? Um, I do think it's going to be definitely a tough matchup, but I do know that they have also uh, lost some seniors, so uh, hopefully we can kind of stick it out, especially kind of get some wins from, you know, doubles, um, and yeah, so I think, I think we can do pretty good. Thank you. That, now that will conclude the first episode of the Vikings Monthly Recap.